Welcome to this video. This video is going to be a tutorial of the Math Worksheets Generator software, which is a fantastic new software to help you make math educational workbooks to sell and publish on Amazon KDP or to create math worksheets that you can sell as printable downloadable products. So this is the dashboard where you land when you log into your account. I want to click on the access now button on the math worksheets generator software. The next page it will take you to is the version of the software that you've purchased. So there is sort of like an entry level base level version of the software and then there are different features and upgrades that you can add on which you will be offered during your checkout process when you're purchasing the software so you can add on whatever it is that you want to have included in the software. I have access to all features and all upgrades of this software. So this is where you create your books essentially and your or your collection of books. To create a new project you just enter in a name and create your collection and then to start making your book or your worksheets you just click on that link and it will take you to your canvas. I'm going to go into this math workbook collection that I've already created. This is where you get access to all the different sums and math problems that you can include in your books. We have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, step multiplication, lattice multiplication, long division, time, fractions, decimal and percentage and within each one there are many different styles or formats of that particular type of sum. So for example we click on addition and there are over 50 different styles of math problems that are all addition. The first tutorial that I'm going to show you there's going to be a couple of different ones within this video. The first one I'm going to do is a timed worksheet workbook that I created. I showed that in the last video about this educational workbook niche. This is the workbook that I created and these are the kind of worksheets where there are 60 problems per page and the person has to time themselves on how long it takes them to complete the sums and then mark themselves of how many they got right. The solutions for all the problems are going to be in the back of the book so they can go to the back of the book and check which ones they got right. So what I'm going to do here is add on just some simple multiplication sums. From here I'm going to sort of just mess around with the format of how many sums I want per page. Because I want 60 I'm going to leave it as it is. So 10 rows with 6 in each column. You can adjust these depending on how many sums you would like per page. So if you only want five rows and then you can put a different set of sums down, down here, you can do that. But I'm going to leave it at the 60. You can also play around with the grid width here, so how far away they are from each other and same with the height. You can also adjust the row spacing and the column spacing if you want more space between each one. Now what I'm going to do with this, the operand range, this is where you can set what numbers you want included in each sum. For this particular workbook I would want each multiplication page to have different numbers. So the first page is going to be sums with only 0 and 1. The second page is going to be sums with only 1 and 2 or 2 and 3 and so on and so on. So they're doing a specific sort of number of sums for each page and so that's what you can do here. So for example for this page I only want the sums to be multiplied with 0 and 1. So we want the first number to be between 0 and 1 but the second number I want that to be anything. So 0 and 1 times anything between 1 and 9 and then I will just randomize it because it, it doesn't have to be in any particular kind of order on the page. And then when we click update worksheet you can see here that every single sum has at least 0 and 1. So 0 times 9, 1 times 0, 0 times 7, so on and so on. Hopefully you can understand what I mean there. So then the next pages that I would create in this workbook that would change to maybe 1 to 2. So then every sum would be times with only one or two. You can see there now we've got nine times two, one times two, three times one, so on and so on. So it's not just a whole book of random sums. Each page is going to be sort of a specific number that they have to work out the multiplication sum for. Hopefully that makes sense. Here is where you can also customize the index. What the index is, is the number of each sum. So this is how they can go find the solution. They know that they can look for page one sum 
10. And so that's what index is. You can turn it off if you want. I'm not sure if it's the best idea. It might be a bit hard for them to find the solutions without that number there, but you can remove it if you want. You can mess around with borders and things here as well, divider thickness. And if you want to show the solution while you're working on it, you can, on the page I mean, you can just click that. The solutions will show up and then untoggle that again to remove the solutions. Now, what I would want to do is just adjust the sizing a little bit. So you can do that with these toggles here because I would like to have some sort of title up here or something. So I do want to have a little bit of space there. And then if I want to make sure it is lined correctly, you can adjust all the alignment here. So I would just want it centered within the page, but even just doing it like that, you can see these line, these guidelines will tell you when your elements are centered on the page. From here, once you have done all your pages and you're ready to export the workbook, you want to also make sure you add in your solutions at the end of the book. So what you do is you make sure there's nothing selected. So you just click anywhere away and unselect any of the problems. Then this little button will show up and you click show solutions. Then we click generate solutions and it's going to have all the solutions for all the sums within your workbook. We click back to math workbook and if we scroll all the way down, the last pages of your book are going to be all the solutions. And so there you can see how those little index numbers will direct the person to the correct solution. So I think it is a good idea to keep those index numbers in there. To download this, you're going to download it as whatever format that you prefer and you can do any edits in whatever software that you prefer to use. If you do want to add things in after you've created the workbook, just choose however you want to edit it. You can edit it in Photoshop, Illustrator, Canva, PowerPoint, whatever program that you prefer to use. Just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to save it as a JPEG and I'm going to open it up in Photoshop and basically all I would do is just add a title here somehow. So let's say I just want to add in that rectangle. I might add in some text, make it a little bit bigger, drag it over here. So I'm just going to write here day one multiplication zero and one. And so I've just added in the time box so they can note down how much time it took them to complete the sums. This is where they can record their score. And obviously that's just telling them what that particular page is. And then within Photoshop, I would just export that as a JPEG or a PDF. And so that's how I created the timed multiplication page. The next page that I created was the Apple's math problem page. I'm gonna very quickly show you how I did this one. So first of all, I basically just went to the images and added in the picture of the Apple you can use these images or you can use your own if you have your own. You just click on the image, it automatically goes into the page and then just adjust the size with these little toggles here. So that's all I did. Now this kind of page takes a little bit more time and a little bit more work if you do want to create something a little bit more interesting and a bit more creative. If you're willing to put in a bit of extra time and effort, you can create something really cool and interesting. So I literally just added all the apples one by one and adjusted them to be the same size and you can see how you can align them up to make sure they're aligned the same. I'm going to do that until my whole page is filled up with apples. And so that's what I ended up with. This is what it looks like after I've added all the, the apples. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can go about getting the sums within the apples. I personally found it easier to put individual sums within the apples, but you can either click on a page of problems that you want to add in. So we've got four apples across and five rows. So we'll change it to the amount of apples that there are. So what you could do is just place the problems over the apples or the image and just adjust everything until you can maybe get it to be sitting within the apples. So if you can play around with it enough to get all the sums lined up nicely within all your images, then that's one option for you. But I found it a little bit easier to add one at a time. So I just did it one by one. I changed one row, one column, gave me one sum, and then I dragged it over the apple and placed it where I wanted it. And then I did it again. <laughs> and I just did that until I had all my sums 
for each apple. Hopefully that makes sense. And so I just went off and added all the sums into the apples and that's the page that I ended up with. And same deal as with the last page I just created. I would just take that into another program to add a title or something like that along the top to let the person know what that page is about and what they're meant to do with those sums. The next workbooks that I created was the clock one. I love this one. My daughter is at an age where she's learning to tell the time and things like that. So this is great for that sort of kindy. In Australia, we have kindy pre-primary year one, year two. So it's great for that those kind of ages. And if we just scroll down here, we have the time problems. Now there's three to choose from. So there's just the hands and they have to tell what the time is. There's the time and they have to draw the hands on the clock. And then this one's just a multiple choice type of thing. So I just used the hands and this page is one that I created in color. But that was just to demonstrate that there is color options available within this program as well. And so it works the same. You can adjust how many problems you have per page and how close together that you want each problem. You can adjust the sizing of the clocks to be bigger or smaller. You can also adjust the hour hand length and thickness as well as the minute hand length and thickness, whether the hand is rounded. This particular math problem has a lot of customization features with the look of it actually. You can add an arrow to the end of the clock hands. You can add some bezel and changing the colors of not just the clock face, but the hands and the bezel and things like that. We can adjust the tick, the hour numbers, and the index numbers again. So this is where you can change the color of the dial or the clock face. If you wanted it red, for example, or a blue. And once you do make a change in here, you just click update worksheet and it will update it over here on your page. So we can have a blue clock face and we can change the color of the writing to white to make it more noticeable. We can adjust the color of the hands if we want. We can adjust how far away this solution line is from the clock. There are so many different things that you can do with this specific problem in terms of how it looks. It's a really cool one. And then all I did again was download it, take it to my preferred graphic design program and added some extra elements and some extra images and the little title telling them that they need to figure out what the time is basically from those clocks. As with all the workbooks and worksheets that you make, once you finish creating it, click show solutions and it will generate the solutions for all the pages in your workbook. And then the next one that I just want to show you is how sort of quick it is to create multiple pages within your workbook. So, you know, if you're going to be creating a book that's going to have 100, 120 pages or more, Basically, all you would need to do is decide what sums are going to go in which page, whether it's going to be a book of all addition or of all subtraction, or if it's going to be all different types of math problems, you need to just work that out first. And then from there, let's say you want to have five pages of addition first, we'll click one, then we want a new page, and then you might want to do this type of addition sum. And then the next page will have this kind of problem. Then we add another page and we'll have one of these kind of ones. And so that's how quick and easy it is to basically create a book. That's taking me literally a second or two to create each page. Just one click and it's added. One click and it's added. And it would take a really short amount of time to create a full book when you're just doing these more simple layouts of pages. And once I've created my whole book, I would then create my solution so that there's the solutions at the end of the book. I would download the whole book as a PowerPoint because I find it very easy to edit masses amounts of pages within PowerPoint but if you have your own preferred way of doing it you just download it whatever format you want. I download it as a PowerPoint and then I just quickly go into PowerPoint and add a title to each slide that says what that page's math problems is. So it would just be a little title at the top that says addition. The next page would be multiplication if that's what's next and that's how I would go about creating a full workbook of math problems that is so easy. This is something that would have taken hours upon hours to do before and knowing that you have to have them 100% correct these problems. It's just so exciting that we can make these types of books now and get into this niche. So that is my tutorial of the math 
workbook generator software. I'm so excited about this software. If you are watching this and it is before the 25th of July 2022, this software is still within its launch phase, which is the time when you will get it at the best price. It is discounted until the 25th of July. So if you do want to invest in this software during launch so that you do get it at the best price, now is the time to get it. And if this is a niche that you've been wanting to get into and if these are the types of books that you've been really wanting to make, I really hope that you enjoy this software as much as I have. I think it has so many features and so many math problems that you can just make such different types of books and they're all going to be unique and it's just a great investment into your KDP publishing business. If you did like this video and if you would like to see more tutorials and more math books and math pages that I create, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. I'm more than happy to do more tutorial videos and show you different ways that you can use this software and I'll see you in the next video.